welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. Today I have a mini book haul. Um, I say mini because there's only like seven books. Um, but I had a £25 Amazon gift card that needed to be used. And um, what better way to spend an Amazon gift card than on books? So, first we have um, Spacebound by Tom Fletcher. <laughs> on the front it says can the worst band in the world become the best band in the universe? Which is sounds really cool. Um, but it's written by Tom from the band McFly. Um, and I'm a big fan of McFly and Tom is my favourite. So I've been buying all his books. I haven't actually read any other than like his small children's dinosaur pooped Christmas books. So um yeah, I've just been buying them, collecting them and putting them on my shelf. I haven't actually got around to them yet. So this one is about George, Mila and Bash, who are the worst band on earth. They want to be superstars, but Mila has stage fright and Bash is obsessed with meteors, aliens and faraway planets. Um, they're determined to blow their friends away at their school Battle of the Bands concert. The moment they start to play, they're beamed up into space and um, now they face an even bigger challenge, Battle of the Bands, but the intergalactic version. They're competing against alien bands from every galaxy and if they don't win, they might never make it home. Oh my god, this sounds really good. I hope I land on middle grade in like the next month or two so I can add this to my TBR. Sounds really funny. Uh, this book contains musical awesomeness performed by McFly. I hate it when they add like little stickers on books, but that's cute. Um, but I was really happy when this arrived because I wasn't expecting the blue spray edges. Yeah, so that's book one. So book two is The Dingy Gang by Tom Fletcher. Um, I had this in hardback, but I wanted the paperback copy because I prefer paperback over hardback. So I gave my nephew the hardback for his birthday last week and bought the paperback for myself. And um, this one came with green sprayed edges, which is awesome. Um, so this one is about, uh, can you keep the secret? Are you sure? Because this one is pretty big. Ever since the freaky storm, something has been happening to the kids on Frankie's street. One by one, they're changing, becoming a little odd, a little unusual, a little magical. At first, Frankie's excitement. Frank, at first, Frankie's excited to be part of an amazing gang, just like his hero, super spy Zack Danger. But soon, it seems there might be a real danger in store for Frankie and his new friends. Mm. So I'm guessing. People are going missing. Um, Frankie forms a little gang called the Danger Gang and tries to find them. Which again sounds interesting. I don't know why I haven't gotten to these books like a lot sooner. But yeah, we have this one. Um, I now bought a change of genre. I bought Powerless by Lauren Roberts because it was like two pounds fifty. Um, I have no idea what it's about, but for some reason it was in my wish list because that's where I found all these books in my wish list. Um, it, I have no idea how it got in my wish list. I haven't seen anyone read it up until yesterday, um, but her video was like eight months old. But I only found her yesterday on BookTube, um, so. And I do know that the second one is out and it's on the TikTok shop uh, and it has really nice sprayed edges for the, for the second book. So I'm debating on getting that next month when I get paid. Only the extraordinary belong in the kingdom of Ayla, Isla. The elite have possessed power for decades, gifted to them by the plague, while those born ordinary are just that, banished from the kingdom of Isla and shunned from society. No one knows this better than Pedro Gray, an ordinary posing as a psychic to blend in with the elites. Cool. 
uh, when she unexpectedly sees one of Isla's princes, Kai Azir. She's thrown into the purging trials, a brutal competition showcasing the elite's powers. If the trials and the opponents within them don't kill her, the prince she's fighting feelings for will if he discovers that what Beatrice is completely ordinary. Okay, this sounds really cool. And it looks like it's going to be a trilogy. So that's nice. I have no idea where I'm going to, where I'm going to get to it. The next four are all how Ali is on the hood. Um, and the weird thing is, like, I bought these ones as like a second hand off Amazon. I all but one, which is Checkmate, look brand new. Like, the spines haven't been cracked or anything. But my sister had a... Uh, I think it was these two out of the library a couple of weeks back and she asked me to return them but I had to wait for my mum after an appointment while she went to my appointment before I went to the library so I read the first chapter of them both and I was like ooh this sounds really interesting and I couldn't remember which one it was that sounded the most interesting of the two uh, so yeah I bought all four <laughs> um, so first we have Check Meat which is about a girl called Mallory uh, who is done with chess. <laughs> Every move counts nowadays. After the sport led to the destruction of her family four years earlier, Mallory focuses on her mum, her sisters, and the dead end job that keeps the lights on. That is until she begrudgingly agrees to play in one last charity tournament and inadvertently wipes the board with notorious killer King Killer, Nolan Slayer currently world champion and reigning bad boy of chess. No one's loss to an unknown rookie shocks everyone. What's even more confusing is desire to cross pawns again. What kind of gambit is no one playing? The smart move would be to walk away. Resign, game over. But Mallory's victory opens the door to sorely needed cash prizes and despite everything, she can't help feeling drawn to the enigmatic strategy. As she rockets up the ranks, Mallory struggles to keep her family safely separated from the game that wrecked it in the first place, and as her love for the sport so she so desperately wanted to hate begins to rekindle, Mallory quickly realises that the games aren't only on the board, the spotlight is brighter than she imagined, oh, and the competition can be fiercely attractive and intelligent and infuriating. This sounds interesting. I'm not really into chess. I have no idea how to play chess. Uh, but I did watch The Queen's Gambit. <laughs> if that helps. That's the next one. Love on the Brain. If NASA offered her the lead on a neuroengineering project, a literal dream come true, Marie would accept without hesitation. Duh. But the mother of modern physics never had to co-lead with Levi Ward. Sure, Levi is attractive and tall, in a tall, dark and piercing eyes kind of way, but Levi made his feelings toward being very clear in grad school. Arch enemies work best, employed in their own galaxies far, far away. But when her equipment starts to go missing and the staff ignore her, Beast could swear she sees Levi softening into an ally, backing her plays, seconding her ideas devouring her with those eyes. The possibilities have all her neurons firing. But when it comes time to actually make a move and put her heart on the line, there's only one question that matters. What will we do? Oh, interesting. I know a lot of her books are like, is it the enemies to lovers kind of books? My favourite trope. Well, one of my favourite books. Uh, next we have the love hypothesis and this was the one that I wanted to read the most uh, and this one's about like a fake dating relationship um, which is another one of my favourites when it comes to romance. So when a fake relationship between scientists meets the irresistible force of attraction it throws one woman's careful calculated theories on love into chaos. 
as a third year PhD candidate. Ollie Smith doesn't believe in lasting romantic relationships, but her best friend does, and that's what caught her into the situation. Convincing Anne that Olive is on her way to a happily ever after was always going to be tough. Scientists require proof. So, like any self-respecting woman, Olive panics and kisses the first man she sees. That man is none other than Eden Carlson, a young hotshot professor, a well-known and well-known ass, which is why Olive is positively flawed when he agrees to keep her charade a secret and be her fake boyfriend. But when a big science conference goes haywire and Adam surprises her again with his unyielding sport, support and his unyielding abs, their little experiment feels dangerously close to combustion. Olive soon discovers that the only thing more complicated than a hypothesis on love is putting her own heart under the microscope. I want to read this one soon. I'm not really a big romance reader, but you know, a lot of these Ali Hazel books are like highly recommend. So I wanted to give them a try. And again, I had an Amazon gift card and I had to spend it on something. And the last one is look theoretically <clears throat> to many lives a theoretical physicist. Elsie Hannaway have finally caught up with her. By day, she's an um, abducted professor, trailing away at grading labs and teaching thermodynamics in the hopes of landing tenure. Back in the days, Elsie makes up her non existent paycheck by offering her services as a fake girlfriend, tapping into her expertly honed people pleasing skills to embody whichever version of herself the client needs. Honestly, it's a pretty sweet gig, until her carefully constructed LC verse comes crashing down, because Jack Smith, the annoyingly attractive and arrogant older brother of her favourite client, turns out to be the cold-hearted experimental physicist who ruined her mentor's career and undermined the reputation of theorists everywhere. And he's the same Jack Smith who ruled over the physics department at MIT, standing right between Elsie and her dream job. Elsie is prepared for an all-out war of scholarly sabotage, but those long penetrating looks, not having to be with anything, not having to be anything other than her true self when she's with him, will fall into an experimentalist orbit finally tempt her to put her most guarded theory on love to practice. Again, another one that sounds really good. Um, I don't know which book of all of these I'm going to get to first, but they all sound interesting. And they're like a mix of different things. Yes, these five sound like romance books but they're you know they're all different well these two both about the scientists who are running love and so. yeah so this is my haul for april it's been a while since i've done a book haul because the only books i've been getting are from book boxes and i don't think they should be in a book haul um so yeah so that's all i have for today if you like this video hit like if you want to see more from me hit subscribe and i will see you in my next video bye